This happened in 2004. I was a new college graduate starting my career in healthcare at a hospital two hours away from where I grew up. The hospital I worked at was huge. A level one trauma center. I work in a highly specialized area. There were only two other people at the hospital with my licensure. That's important because we spent a lot of time working alone in our department and had to stagger our shifts for coverage. I had the early shift. I arrived at 5.45 in the morning. Staff parking was several city blocks away from the hospital and they sent a shuttle to pick employees up. The lot was surrounded by an urban forest. The city tried to leave as much green space and trees as possible. There was nothing else near the parking lot at the time. Since I arrived so early, the shuttle service had to be called when I arrived. The call button was located at the shuttle stop, meaning you had to leave your car to communicate with the dispatch. I was always creeped out because, even though there were parked cars, there were never any employees in the lot at the time I came in. The overnight shift didn't change until 7 a.m., a few weeks after I started working there, I had settled into the shuttle routine and gotten more comfortable. At this time, cell phone service was spotty at best, and I didn't own a smartphone, so it wasn't very reliable. One afternoon, when I returned to my car, I found a note left on my windshield. It read, Hot and sweet you are. I glanced around and didn't see anyone. I was perplexed, but not really frightened. Another week passed. I forgot about the note. Until one afternoon I returned to my car, and found a flower in the windshield wiper, and another note. This one read, I really love your dimples. I could make you smile. What the heck? I had just moved to this town and didn't have any friends beyond the other two people in my department. I didn't know anyone else. I did feel creeped out this time, and began feeling like I was being watched or something. Early in the mornings, I would park as close to the shuttle stop as possible, buzz the dispatch, and then wait in my car with the doors locked. I often imagined I heard shuffling noises like shoes scraping through the gravel, and I couldn't see all the way to the dark corners of the lot. When I returned to my car in the afternoons, I carried my pepper spray just in case. I told my coworkers about the notes, and they told me I should tell security. I felt a little silly, but I made a report. Security said they would keep an eye out, whatever that meant. I stopped parking in that lot opting instead to find parking on the street nearer to the hospital where there were other people around. Things went fine for the next few weeks, until one day I got another note. This time, it was on my car one morning, outside my apartment building. In the same scribbly handwriting, it simply read, Don't be shy. I was so confused. What did this person want? Obviously they were following me, and now they knew where I lived, and probably knew I lived alone. I contacted the police. There wasn't much they could do, but they did make some safety recommendations, and said they would patrol the neighborhood more often. I took a self-defense class and was hyper-aware of my surroundings. It was worse not knowing who I was dealing with. A few weeks later, a woman was found assaulted and murdered in the trees behind the employee parking lot. They caught the guy a couple days later. I recognized him. He was a contract painter who had been working in my area. The hospital had been remodeling our department, and this painter would come in early, around 6.30 a.m. I made coffee every morning in the break room, and he would come in to get a cup. We made small talk a few times, but never any red flags. Then it came back to me. Sometimes he would call me Dimples. I shivered. Good morning, Dimples. I was shocked that he had literally been right under my nose for weeks. 
I had been totally alone with him on many occasions, and I never suspected anything. I don't know for certain that he was the one leaving the notes, but they stopped after he was arrested. Anyway, stay safe out there, guys and gals. If you really like my content and want to support me, please like this video and click the subscribe button. It helps me to grow my channel as essential in reaching a wider audience. Most of you watching my videos aren't subscribed to my channel, and that's why my animations can't reach their full potential. They aren't recommended to more people who would surely love my content as much as you do. You can always unsubscribe at any moment. Thank you in advance, and enjoy the rest of the video. When I was in college, I worked the night shift one summer vacation. I was 19 years old and an average looking female. I wasn't enthused about having to work a job over the summer, but it was the only way I was going to be able to afford tuition. Working night shift was probably the weirdest experience of my life. It was at the McDonald's drive through I still remember my first night on the job. This lady came in and was talking to someone while she was waiting for us to take her order. She sounded extremely upset, and she was screaming at the top of her lungs. It sounded like it was directed at someone in the back seat. I immediately assumed that she was abusing her children. I'm a psychology major, so I naturally pick up on stuff like that. She ordered three Big Macs and three large Cokes. My intuition has been wrong. When she pulled up to pay for her meal, she was completely alone. I was honestly a little startled. Why would this lady be here ordering this much food and screaming in her car if she was alone? I couldn't wrap my head around the situation. She was otherwise polite. She was nice as she spoke to me and paid for her food and left. She even told me to have a good night. She had been the only customer we had in a probably 45-minute window. And after she left, I saw some of my co-workers laughing at me. I asked, what's so funny? And he told me that it was my first encounter with Schizo Susan. They told me that she regularly did stuff like this, and always showed up at all hours of the night to order seemingly too much food. She was always yelling at people in her car, but there was never anyone actually in her car. They didn't actually know her name, so they just started calling her Schizo Susan. They told me that there were occasional nights when she was the only customer to come through the drive through at all. I found it extremely unnerving. I immediately started wondering what was wrong with this woman. About a week went by. She came in every night just like they said and in between speaking to me to order her food and picking up her food, she was always yelling at someone. I couldn't take it anymore. I had to know what was up. So I formulated a plan. I was just going to ask her who she was speaking to. You know, play it off like I thought she was talking to me. It was the best I could come up with without seeming abrasive. I remember it being a Friday night when I decided I was going to do it. I had chickened out a couple of times, but I figured that since I don't work the weekends, may as well try something new to end my last shift for the week. Well, the night that I did it, I listened in to her screaming for a few more seconds than I normally did. You see, I can listen to what people are saying through the McDonald's speaker without them necessarily knowing that I'm listening. If I don't say anything, they would never know. I normally never did this because it's kind of frowned upon. I'm pretty sure there's some kind of rule against it. But I listened for maybe 20 or 30 seconds. I listened for long enough to know that she was yelling at someone named Darian. When she was in the middle of saying something, I interrupted her and said, I'm sorry ma'am, were you speaking to me? She just replied, no. Crap, I thought to myself. I knew that I had to try something else. I asked her if Darian would be ordering with her. Then she went silent. It wasn't an entire minute, but she didn't say anything. 
After the second time of asking her if she was still there, she let out a banshee scream. It was the loudest thing I have ever heard in my life. It really hurt my ears. The McDonald's microphone system is already pretty loud, but when someone screams into it, trust me when I say that it is the most unbearable thing you have ever experienced. I was also surprised at how long she screamed. She had one deep, loud, guttural scream going for like 30 entire seconds. In the moment, though, I was scared for my life. I also got really worried that I was going to lose my job. I felt really guilty for asking, like it was my fault for setting her off. In retrospect, I don't think I really did anything horrible to her. Literally just asked her if the person whose name she was screaming just a minute ago was also going to be ordering food. She didn't actually say anything when she screamed. It was just kind of a violent and guttural screaming. I was really taken aback there for a minute. How the heck do you even respond to that? I asked her if she wanted to continue placing her order, and that's when she just drove away. She really floored it and drove way faster than she should have. And as she drove by, I saw her face looking at me through the window. It must have been only a split second that I could see her, but I got that one really good look at her. She looked extremely distressed, and as if things couldn't get any weirder, the microphone system stopped working correctly the rest of the night. I think she screamed loud enough to break something in it. That was hands down the weirdest thing to ever happen to me throughout any jobs I've ever worked. And this weird lady just disappeared after that. She stopped coming to McDonald's altogether. I asked some of my other co-workers how long she had been stopping by for her nightly visits, and they all said that it was for as long as they can remember, which probably meant at least a year. I felt somewhat guilty for pissing this lady off so bad, but I think it is safe to say she probably needs some serious mental help. I haven't worked at McDonald's in a long time, and I don't ever plan on working fast food again. I just hope that wherever that lady ended up, she got the help that she so desperately and obviously needed. I was 22 and lived in my parents' house while they had left South Africa to work abroad. My grandmother moved in with me to help out as I was a single mother while still studying in university. In the end, we helped each other because she was also on oxygen due to chronic lung disease. Growing up in South Africa, we are taught from a very young age that it's important to make sure all doors are locked and windows are closed at night. Being a very private person, I would always have my curtains closed. People can be extremely nosy here. Well, one night after a long day of studies and simply being a mom, we locked all the doors and shut the windows, pulling all the curtains closed to settle in for the night. Now, my son was not a great sleeper and would often wake up throughout the night. After dozing off, later that evening he woke me up asking for his bottle and I decided to check the time, slightly blinded by the TV's light. I sat up, rubbing my eyes. 10 p.m. Something wasn't right. I felt like we weren't alone. As I peered through the doorway into the passage, I could have sworn I saw a dark shadow almost crawling across the tiled floor. I'm imagining things. I must be. Shrugging it off, I pass my son his bottle. Still, I swear I'm hearing sounds, like someone coming up the stairs this time, but that's in the opposite direction. The railing creaks, and I'm about to get out of my bed to check, when a face peeks around the corner of my bedroom door. Gran, is that you? Expecting her to be needing help with something, so I reached for my phone to create light, as I had already switched the TV off again. 
A man storms into my room and grabs my phone before I can hide it. I'm in so much shock, yet I know exactly what is going on at that moment. Take whatever you want. Please, just don't hurt us. I say calmly. He puts his index finger to his lips. Shh. He's just standing there, as though he is waiting and watching guard. Then suddenly... Three other men rush in and ask question after question. Where's the safe? Where's the weapons? Where's this and that? They were all armed and I had no idea what they had planned for us. I just couldn't keep up, trying to answer all their questions. Why would I, a single mother in a house with her child and grandmother, have a weapon? In all honesty, I've never even owned one. They took everything and then insisted on taking my car keys. I tried telling them I couldn't remember where I had put them, but they stuck a weapon in my two-year-old son's face and asked again, where are the keys? So I told them where I thought I had left them. After going through all my things, taking what they wanted, and were then ready to leave, I am presuming they were throwing everything into my car for the getaway. The one guy chose to stick around in my room a little longer, Give me a kiss, he whispered. Oh no, I was shouting in my mind, still trying to stay composed. He put out his hand and took mine, then the others called for him, and as he pulled away, I dug my nails into his hand and scratched. If I was going to do anything, I was going to get DNA off one of them. If no one could see what was going on in my home, I would find a way to get justice. Don't scream, they said, and ran down the stairs. I ran down after them and screamed as loud as I could for help from the neighbors as they sped off in my car. Standing outside in the pitch black, calling for anyone to help us. And yet no one heard. It felt like hours had passed. No phones, no laptops, no means of contact. They took everything and I couldn't even call my parents. To this day, these men have never been caught, and I wonder, if I had my curtains open, perhaps someone might have seen. People were still awake. I am now 35, and since that night, I refuse to go to sleep without my curtains open, and at least one light on. Most people don't even believe me when I tell them, but I have a job where I work from home. People in my area mostly work with cars or in the medical industry. There aren't many jobs where I live. Thankfully, I was able to land a decent paying job that let me work from my home office. It definitely comes with its struggles, but it is hands down the best job opportunity available to me right now. It isn't always perfect, It definitely comes with its pitfalls. Sometimes you have to sit at your computer even when there isn't any work to be done. It's also very easy to get distracted. But I think my biggest problem has to do with the house itself. It's kind of creepy. The house itself is an old Victorian. Like really old. We're talking mid-1800s. A family friend owned the house and sold it to me for a very fair price basically gave it to me. I was super excited because it meant I got a nice big house to live in by myself along with my girlfriend. I'm a natural loner and don't really care for social interaction. So I had a nice big house all to myself and girlfriend and a job where I worked from home with very minimal social interaction with other people. That was basically my ideal life. But the house's age meant that it was going to be scary at times and I don't mean with ghosts or anything like that, but sometimes I hear the house settling or making noises that I can't explain. I've actually had quite a few instances where I'll be sitting down and doing some work, and then out of nowhere, I hear a noise that I just can't rationalize. I go exploring throughout the house, 
only to find that nothing has changed. It's as ominous as it is frustrating. I did what just about anyone else in the world would do. I started to use background noise to drown out the disturbances. First, I tried those quiet instrumentals on YouTube. You know, the ones that last five hours and they're supposed to put you at ease or something. It didn't really work for me because I couldn't get my computer to be loud enough to drown out all the noises. It was also not very good at keeping my attention. There was one week where my work was really slow and there wasn't a whole lot to do. I still had to sit at my computer though. There was an understanding that I was allowed to basically do anything I wanted as long as I was available to my coworkers if something came through that needed to be done. I didn't quite know what to do with this time and just started watching documentaries on YouTube. It actually was pretty fun. I learned a lot. So that next week when things started picking up again, I just instinctively turned on a documentary. I wouldn't be able to have all my focus on it, but it was a lot better than having some ambient noise. It actually helped distract me from the sounds of the house. I guess I just didn't have enough mental focus energy to notice any of the other sounds going on around me, if that makes any sense. Well, it had been about two weeks of me watching documentaries while I worked. Everything seemed to be good, until one Friday morning. I start work at 8, and this must have happened around 10. I was sitting at my office chair working, while I listened to a documentary about a 9-11 conspiracy theory. When all of a sudden, I heard an abrupt banging noise coming from upstairs. Like I had said, I hadn't been distracted by any noises for a while by this point. So, the fact that I noticed this noise meant that it was probably serious. My fight or flight kicked in. You might laugh at me, but when I work, I keep a knife next to me. I ran upstairs with the knife and looked around for any suspicious noises. The banging had stopped, and I didn't know where it had come from. I knew what section of the house that I heard it from, but there didn't seem to be anything out of place. I stood there for a few moments, and then I heard it again. It happened right on the other side of my door. I immediately braced myself for there to be some kind of animal or something trying to get in. I didn't really know what to expect. I opened my door to see that the screen door had not been properly closed. My girlfriend didn't close it all the way when she left for work that morning. It was also pretty windy that day, so it was just going back and forth, causing a banging noise when the wind got bad. This was kind of a breaking point for me. I didn't want to live my life in constant paranoia and fear of some kind of attacker coming into my home. We live in a safe area. There's never been a serious threat, and I have run around my house with a knife way too many times now. I honestly felt kind of stupid. So I made a decision. I was no longer going to assume that someone was breaking in if and when I ever heard a sound. I put the knife in my dresser in my bedroom and decided that I was just going to be into work while I was working. Except for my documentary, of course. So, there I was the next week. It happened on a Wednesday. I was sitting in my office doing exactly what I had set out to do. I was working, ignoring the noises, and listening to a documentary. I remember the exact part of the documentary I was on when I heard it. The sound was the loudest sound I had heard in the house up to that point. At first, I reassured myself that it was nothing and that I need to fight against this paranoia. The sound continued, and I couldn't take my mind off it. After about five minutes of listening to what sounded like rummaging and walking, I went upstairs to check. Bear in mind, I didn't have any weapon on me, and I was expecting some kind of reasonable explanation. When I got to my kitchen, I saw that the front door was wide open. The cabinets were all open, and there was a strange man rummaging through them. I didn't notice until after the fact, but he had been eating something. I remember screaming at him. I don't remember what I said, but it was something to the effect of, What are you doing in my house? Then he just ran off. Didn't say a word. He took a loaf of bread with him, but I don't think he took anything else. 
other than what he had eaten before I came upstairs. I reasoned with myself that he must have been a homeless man or something. I don't know why else you would steal a loaf of bread from a very ordinary looking house. This was the worst thing that could have happened. On some instinctive level, it had proved all my worst fears right. There was some kind of danger in my house. And of course, it was the one time when I didn't have my knife on me. I lucked out that he didn't try to hurt me or anything, but it was still horrifying to see nonetheless. I just work at a local coffee shop now. It's the only way to stay sane. Before I start this story off, this was about a year ago, and though I do have some thoughts that this was sleep paralysis, I am leaning more towards the idea of it just being a nightmare. What makes me think that it could have been sleep paralysis was the fact that I heard my brother go to the bathroom, and when I woke up, he was coming out of the bathroom, but I could have just heard the bathroom door close in my sleep, and my mind included it in my nightmare, since it is a common occurrence. During the time of which this occurred, I was asleep in my room and my door a little less than halfway open. I felt awake, and I was asleep on my left side. To give you a quick layout of my room, as it is relevant to the story, my bed was centered against the wall, while my door is in front of my bed, all the way to the right of the front wall. To the left of my bed, I have a mirror, which allows me to see my door even if I am facing away from it. As I had my eyes closed, I heard my brother walk into the bathroom and shut the door, making the area outside of my room dark, since the only source of light that was illuminating the hallway was closed off. Suddenly, from my mirror, I saw a tall, lengthy woman walk up to my doorway. She looked drenched, and her skin was a grayish color. Since it was dark, I couldn't make out too many details but all I know is that I was terrified out of my mind. I tried moving, but of course, I couldn't. I couldn't even make out the smallest noise. All I could do was hope that my brother would walk out of the bathroom and this dream or sleep paralysis episode would end. I squeezed my eyes shut, not wanting to see the thing for much longer. This was when I didn't have carpet in my room, so the sound of her dropping to the ground was even more audible than it normally would have been. It almost sounded like someone dropped a huge piece of meat on a hard floor, with the exception of the sound of her bones cracking when she did so. My breathing became rapid as I heard her crawl on all fours toward my side of the bed, almost inhumanly fast. I kept my eyes shut, fearing that if I opened them, it would take long to get over the horrifying face that I would see. All I heard for those few seconds was breathing and my heart beating in my ears. This was in a whisper tone. Open your eyes. Out of nowhere, I was snapped awake and let out a small scream as I thought the woman was still in the room. But she wasn't. There was no one by my bed. The bathroom door opened and my brother peeked into my room, confused. I didn't have to say a word, and he just switched on the light for me and went back to his room. But I stayed up for a few hours after that, being too scared to go back to sleep. Terrified, I would see that same woman and hear that same voice. Open your eyes. I've been working at my local McDonald's for four years now, and it's one of the most annoying jobs I've ever had. People coming in left and right and through the drive through with orders piling up was honestly enough to make the average worker irritated. I sure as hell had to go through it all, and there would even be times where I couldn't finish up customers' orders. If you've ever worked at McDonald's, you get where I'm coming from. 
This happened around a year ago, right before the pandemic hit, and I was working overnight shift on front counter. I usually work in the kitchen on overnight, so I had no interactions with any customers until then. I was working a 7 hour shift, which was a usual overnight shift for us. It was around 9pm and I had just finished putting in a customer's order when I noticed a man talking to a young boy near the play area. Yes, we were still one of the few restaurant chains that still actually had one. The man is kneeled down to the little boy's height and right away the boy seemed very uncomfortable. I dismiss it as the boy probably having a rough day with who I assume was his father trying to calm him down. I remained focused on putting in customers orders and try not to interfere with whatever was going on. Suddenly the man grabs the boy's arm and they're heading in the direction of the front door that leads out into the parking lot. At that point, I couldn't keep my mouth shut and was about to say something when I hear someone yell, Hey, what the hell are you doing with her son? Just then, the mother comes out of the restroom and the man is petrified. His face was pale and his eyes were as big as saucers and tried to cover it up by saying, Oh, this is your child. I'm so sorry. He looked lost and I was just trying to help him find his parents. His mumbles and incompetent use of wording clearly gave away as to what he was actually trying to do. The mother gave him an uncomfortable smile that had stayed the hell away from my kid written all over. Police were called, but I wasn't sure if he was caught or not. 